Welcome to FreshMy.com. My name is Eric, and I'm going to show you how to make a simple wine bottle and a label. Now, I'm going to move kind of quickly just so I can keep these videos shorter. So uh, feel free to use the rewind and the pause button as much as you need to. I've already created a couple of images. I have an image of an outline of a wine bottle that I can use for reference, and I also have a label that I made in Microsoft Paint. No particular size. All right, back into Maya, I'm going to go to a front view panel. I'm going to go to the view panels menu bar under view, down to image plane, over to import image. I'm going to select my wine bottle outline and click open, and that puts it into our view panel. I'm going to create this by using a polygon cylinder. Our cylinder has eight sides to it, uh, which is fine. I'm going to scale this up to where it lines up with the width of our bottle. And I'm going to scale it up till it lines up with the height of our bottle. I'm going to zoom in here, shift, right click, cut faces tool. Uh, where it starts to slope inward, I'm going to put a cut there, and where the uh, neck uh, slopes, put a cut there. Alright, Q to get out of that tool, F9, so I can select some vertices, select like these top ones, scale those in to the width of the bottleneck, push that down to where it needs to go so it lines up a little better. This next one, I'm going to scale that in. And since when we do a uh, smooth on this, the angles will get averaged out. So I'm going to pull this in a little further. And I'm going to scale this out a little bigger. So something like that. And down here at the bottom, shift, right click, cut faces tool. I'm going to put a cut where this uh, bottom starts to curve. All right. That's all done. I'm going to go to a perspective view. F11 so I can select some faces. I'm going to select all these top faces. Hit the delete button on my keyboard to get rid of those. F8, get back to object mode. I'm going to do an extrude. Look for the blue arrow. And so I don't get bigger than my reference, I'm going to extrude this inward. Since I extruded inward, or rather the opposite direction of this blue arrow, it uh, flipped all our polygon faces backwards. So F8 to get back to object mode. To fix that, I'm going to go to normals and then click on reverse. So that turns all of our polygon faces right side out. All right, F8, get back to object mode. Go back to our image plane view. Shift, right click, cut faces tool. Uh, this part where it extrudes outward, I'm going to make a cut at the top of it and a cut at the bottom of it. F uh, Q to get back out of that tool. F11, so I can select some faces. I'm going to use my paint select tool. Select all these faces right there. Do an extrude. Look for the blue arrow. Pull it out some. All right. I mentioned that when we do a smooth on this, it's going to average out all the angles. So to keep these angles from getting way too rounded and uh, smooth flowing, I want these to be a little more pronounced. So I'm going to F10 so I can select some edges. Select this edge loop, that edge loop, and then the two underneath that. So I've got those two edge loops and those two edge loops right there selected. I'm going to do a bevel. Open a channel box. I'm just going to click on the word bevel that we just did. And then I'm going to click on offset. And now I can middle mouse drag left and right of my screen to adjust the offset instead of having to type it in there. All right, so point 0.3 looks good. I'm going to select oh, Q to get out of that. Select this edge loop and that edge loop, so the inside and outside edge of the top lip of our bottle. Do a bevel. Same thing, click on poly bevel 2, click on offset, and then just adjust that. And actually that's probably good, so 0.3 there as well. Okay, I'm done with the image plane, so I'm going to go back to my front view since that's where we loaded our image plane. Go to View, down to Image Plane, over to Image Plane Attributes, and then Image Plane 1. Now I'm just going to press the Delete button on my keyboard, and it gets rid of our image. Go back to my Channel Box, Perspective View, select my bottle, give it a name, Wine Bottle. Let's go ahead and delete the history on it. Edit, Delete by Type History. I'll make a duplicate, so Control D, move that out of the way, and let's do a Save. I'm going to name this wine bottle one underscore one. So the first wine bottle I'm modeling and the underscore one for the first phase of it. Save. 
All right, we're ready to do a smooth. So I got my bottle selected. Uh, everything looks good. Mesh, smooth. All right, over in channel box, you'll see a poly smooth face one that we just did. If we click on that, you should see divisions. If you change divisions to zero, it will put it at a low poly mesh. If you change it to two, it'll make a nice mesh, but you can change that divisions to whatever you want. Uh, so I'm gonna put mine on two. Uh, F8, go back to object mode, go to a front view, smooth shade that. Let's uh, make the geometry for our label. I'm gonna press F11, so I can select faces, use my paint select tool, and I'm just gonna look on here and select some faces that I wanna use for my label. So, that works for me. With those faces selected, I'm gonna go to Edit Mesh, and click on Duplicate Face. I'm gonna press F8 to go to object mode, press and hold down the shift button on my keyboard and then I'm gonna click on the bottle to deselect it. Now all I have selected is the duplicated geometry that we uh, did. Now if you have trouble getting to that what you can do is just select everything like that and then shift click on the bottle and it will uh, do the same thing. Alright, um, with that selected I'm gonna click on the extrude, look for the blue arrow and just pull it out ever so slightly just to add some thickness to our label. All right, so now oh, let me get rid of that grid. There we go. So we have a bottle and we have a uh, geometry for our label. That's going to make it easier when we texture our label. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to do another save. Okay, Windows, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. You'll see this box open up. Left-hand column, you should see Blend. Just click on it and it puts a blend material down here in your work area. I'm going to double click on this blend and that opens up the attributes over here on the right side of my screen. First thing I'm going to do is give it a name. It's MAT for material underscore. Now you can name yours whatever you want to. So I'm naming mine MAT underscore label. L-A-B-E-L. -E I can never remember if it's B-E-L B -E -L or B-L-E or I don't know. Okay so where it says color. Actually, the first thing we do, let's go down here uh, where it says reflectivity. We don't want our label like a mirror, so let's bump that all the way down to zero. Or you can just type in zero either way. Okay, back up here where the color is, right there. Uh, I'm just gonna click on, oh, instead of clicking on the color, we're actually gonna use a file. So to the right of it, you'll see a button with a checkerboard. Just click on that button. And that's gonna open up this dialog box. In the dialog box, you'll see a file. That's gonna allow us to use a uh, file for the color instead of uh, just changing the color. All right, so I'm going to click on this file button right here. Now back over in the attribute editor, you'll see image name right there. And then to the far right of that, you'll see a button with a folder on it. If you click on that button, now you can navigate to your image. I'm going to use my wine label that I made. Click on open, and it puts it in there. And if you look in my hypershade, you'll see that the texture's on there. All right, to add that to our label, all I'm going to do is I'm going to middle mouse drag this over to my label. So I'm just going to put my cursor over this material, hold my uh, press the middle mouse button down, and then just move my mouse over to my label and then let go. And now our texture is on my label. Uh, you can also do it from up here. So if, if you don't have it down here, you can also just middle mouse drag it from up here. All right, uh, we can't see our texture on our bottle, so what we need to do is just make sure our view panel's uh, active, selected, and then press the number six. And there's our texture. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close this hypershade. Uh, I would minimize it, but just in case you accidentally close yours, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close mine, that way you can see me reopen it up each time, or at least a few, maybe a few times. All right, I'm gonna select this label. Uh, we're gonna fix this really easily. With the label selected, and I'm in my polygon menu set. I'm gonna go up to now. Your menu sets might look a little different depending on uh, what version of Maya you have. I've got Maya 2009, so I know that the menu that I need is underneath my polygon menu set. And the menu that I need is this uh, create UVs, and there's a cyl cylindrical mapping. I'm just gonna click on that, and you'll see that we've got this uh, projection. But the projection isn't on the label. It's like way out in front of it. I want to move this projection onto my label so that it, uh, it uh, conforms to my label a lot better. So over here in this um, attribute editor for it, you're going to see projection center, and there's three boxes with three different numbers in it. This is X, 
y, and z. X, Y, and Z. Whenever you see three boxes like that, that's pretty much what it means. X, Y, and Z. All right. But what's interesting, what is, uh, what I'm interested in is this projection center, and I want to move this projection along my Z axis. So I want to change this number over here. So let's try. Mine's at 2.6. Let's try one. Actually, it's probably it's actually zero. That's right. Okay, so zero, and again, you might just play with those until you get it lining up like mine is. It's right there on my label.